Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Lone Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Yo, what's poppin'? Bro, I don't trust you anymore. Why? You don't even know, do you? No. Is it your birthday? It's not my birthday. That's not until November. Oh, okay. It's coming up, though. Okay. That's right. I've asked you for when your birthday is. Is it January? Um, Ish? Mystery. Okay. Two reasons. Okay. One, I think it's Courtney Meisner. I think you mispronounced Courtney's name. I did it on purpose to make sure she tuned in and listened. Okay. Next. I like that. Next. Yeah, her friends, yeah. Teresa and Nick. Yeah. That's who we hang out. We hung out with. We <laughs> hanged out with. Hey, we don't hang out we, with yeah, them. Yeah, who? We hung out with. Yeah, yeah Teresa and Nick. Who's it? What about them? They were with the group that was yeah. at the pool in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. That was their names. Oh, okay. Last episode, we just called them the Caliber Crew. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It was Courtney. You botched her last name, and she was with Teresa and Nick. Well, you went with it, so it's kind of both of our faults. Okay, but that's not why I don't trust you. Okay. I saw something yesterday I can't unsee. What's that? Clothes of yours yeah. hanging on a fence yeah. in the parking lot. I go hard in the gym every morning, and if you leave them in your gym bag, they tend to mold, and you can't get the smell out. So I park, you're right, 500 yards away from everybody else to air dry my clothes on the fence. I loved it. Yeah. I loved every minute of it because, honestly, yeah. that is where my brain went. I said, JC went hard in the gym. Yeah, I always, yeah. And you don't want that, that funky, five series. Yo, stanky shit. I did it once. Stinking though. up. You did, you've done it before. You left your gym clothes in the car all day in the hot summer Florida summer. Well, I'm gross. I do that often. Yeah. I do that often. You should do be smelling like a hockey locker room. Nothing smells worse than my daughter's dance bag. What? And it's not even my daughter because she's been dancing since she was four. So for the past decade, I've toted her, her friends, and even sometimes the girls next door right. to and from dance. Okay. Yeah. Girls who dance have stinky ass dance really? bags that carry their shoes and their clothes. Well, don't you have a new gym bag? That blue one that uh, Gabby gave us? Did yes. you give her the oh, I get, yeah, but she's not using that for gym. For no, she has a special. Oh, a special bag for, bag dance. for dance. Oh, yeah, that gosh. bag that Gabby that, that Gabby got us that she took. Shout my daughter Gabby. took. Shout out Gabby. Shout out Gabby. Um, she is using that for sleepovers. So now she has a, wow. a dance bag, I a sleepover, sleepover bag, bag, plus a suitcase for travel. Wow. Yeah. Fre so freshman in high school. Freshman in high school. L F G. All right. Today's topic, Dustin. We're going to jump right into I it. I know. What is it? And I'm even starting to think about, dude, your TikTok game is our, getting good. A little, you, know, you said our, John. Our. You don't even give me access to our TikTok. You don't need another rabbit hole to go down. Okay. But you just threw up like a, a 10K spot. That was you. you no, it was my face, yeah, but it was your that. technology. Apparently, people feel much more connected when you look at them like this versus this. So I guess that's the hack. What people would love to see is your no, smiling face. Get, yes. No. We, hey, y'all. Audience, nope. T loppers, do not. Y'all want to see more of JC? Let's let's find a way to do a poll. Let's find a way to make him feel the love. Yeah. Do we want to see JC doing reels? Yeah. Yeah. We we may want to see JC doing reels. I enjoy being behind the camera, sir. Your real game is getting strong. Well, because you have you deliver solid content to the people that you know is timely. Speaking of real content. Speaking of timely real content. Real, R-E-A-L, real, yeah. R-E-E-L. Yeah. In content. Yeah. I love everyone in our industry stepping up their game. I love seeing it, right? Yeah. Like all the content creators from the Pacific Northwest all the way to Key West and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love seeing it. Mm -hmm. But there's a new phenomenon going on that I, anytime I log into one of my social media accounts. Right. Or I log into that mastermind session. Yeah. I'm hearing, oh, y'all, you need to be hitting the market talking about 2 1 buy downs. 2 1 buy downs, this new thing. Hey, it's a secret hack. 2, two 1 buy downs. I said to JC, I said, we did that episode so long ago, I can't remember. You July, pulled it up. July. Well, July 5th. Yes. July 5th. I Look, Listen. I'm going to give credit where credit is due and kudos. Mm -hmm. Get out in the market. You should be selling that. You should learn it. You should teach it. Mm -hmm. But y'all, Welcome to the freaking party. Kind of late. We're Where still, you been? We're still serving beers, but it's wrapping up. Only Miller Lights left. Yeah, it reminds me like 1987. I started tight rolling my jeans. Why? Because I had an older cousin named Jason who tight rolled his jeans, and I idolized him. 
Ah. All of a sudden, it's like 1991. Can't wear that shit no more. Oh, no. Kids in my school figured out how to tight roll their jeans. I'm like, guys, we're done tight rolling. Uh, nope. It's all about Z Cavarici now. Yep. Yeah, yeah, welcome to the party. Yeah. And, and by the way, the baby puts out good music. Yeah. Welcome to the party. That was five years ago. All right. Listen, it's a shift in mindset for you, Dustin. When you're able to put out content that's so hot that nobody knows it's hot yet, you're, you know, you're. By the way, Taylor Swift yeah. no longer sings country. No. Welcome to the party. Never heard of her. Nah, but hey, kudos to all those people doing their two one buy down videos. I'm sure you're going to follow the formula that we talked about. Right. It's going to be even, it'll perform better than ours did. Yeah. But. Fine, we're the first to do it. Doesn't hey, hey go, but, go back. So this will be the same thing with this episode because what are we talking about today? I would never heard this shit, so I'm excited to know what this yeah, is about. Yeah, I'm going to geek out. But again, are we creating content? Mm -hmm. That speaks to people who own homes. Yes. People who want to buy homes. Yeah. People who sell homes for a living. That's the third. Yeah. People who finance homes for a living. That's yeah. Okay. That's basically 85% of the American populace. You will benefit from this episode. Okay. That's the goal of all episodes. Educate, entertain, motivate, inspire. Yeah. That's what we aim to do. Teach you everything you should have learned in high school, but didn't. It's every reason why you need to be subscribing to us on every social handle. Mm -hmm. And check out the website, T-L-O-P online, tloponline.com or theloanofficerpodcast.com. Well said. Assumable mortgages. That's what we're talking about. Mm. I assume you have a mortgage. <laughs> Whenever you assume, John, you make an ass out of you and me. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm it. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I mean, it makes sense. I, if you spell it out, it spells ass, you, me. I get that. Oh, just and making sure. I get that. And then <laughs> obviously, like, people can make assumptions in life, and those assumptions can, can lead you in the wrong direction. Correct. Which is why I've actually learned wordsmithing here, scripting moment, hypothesize. Okay. Instead of saying, hey, I assume, hey, I have an, a, a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Let's hypothesize on that. Okay. Because that's what an assumption is. It is a hypothesis. But for whatever reason, an assumption has a negative connotation. I don't believe a hypothesis or a hypothesis. Sounds scientific, so people accept it. There you go. Yep. There you go. So that being said, we're going to talk about assumable loans. And it's kind of like, well, why? Why is this important? Because it may have not have been important the previous five years or 10 years. Hmm. What does it mean? For a loan to be assumable. Let's start there because you said you don't know, yeah, right? I've never heard of this. You've yeah. never heard of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me as a home buyer, you as a home seller, okay. you want to unload your property mm -hmm. for whatever reason, mm -hmm. right? You're getting divorced. You're getting married and your new wife already owns a house across town that you want to live in. Your job's transferring you. You want to downsize. You want to upsize. Whatever the, yeah. the, the case may be, there's many reasons why people would want to sell their home. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to make your home, the most attractive home for someone to purchase. Mm -hmm. Well, you could do so by dropping the price. Yeah. I mean, you drop the price low enough, you're going to get a lot of people attracted to your home. Right. You could dump a bunch of money into your house to fix it up and make it the prettiest house in the neighborhood. Brand new pool. But what about this, John? What if you bought your home, I don't know, let's say in the past one, two years. Okay. Maybe even three years. Possibly, in some cases, four or five years ago. And you took out an FHA loan, very popular loan. Great loan. Especially first time home buyers love that loan. Mm -hmm. What if you live in a more rural area and you took out a USDA loan? Right? There's a lots of friends, family of mine that live in the Midwest. Yeah. USDA is a fantastic loan product. And that interest rate is, I don't know, two and a half percent, three and a half percent, four and a half percent, five and a half percent. Mm-hmm. All of those percentage rates are drastically lower than today's interest rate. Mm -hmm. Your loan, both FHA and both USDA, they're assumable. That means me as the home buyer could come and purchase your home. And as long as I qualify, now I still have to qualify, right? Which means there's going to be some paperwork involved. I'm going to have to contact your servicer, but I can assume your mortgage. I can assume your terms. I can assume your payment schedule. What an attractive thing to a home buyer to advertise your home mm -hmm. as being a home that comes with an interest rate that could be as much as 75% less than the current market rate. If the current market rate is 7% and you're offering me 3%, what? Mm. That's more than half off the interest rate. Mm. 
Now there's some things to consider. You may be thinking, but yeah, Dio, I bought my house for 250 and my house today is worth 350. Mm -hmm. I'm not selling my house for what I owe. No, you are gonna wanna find a home buyer that still is gonna be able to come up with the cash difference, the down payment mm -hmm. that, that, that spreads between what you currently owe, what, cause that's what they're assuming, cause they can't assume an amount greater than what you owe and what you're selling it for. But there's plenty of people out there that have 10, 20, 30% to put down. And you could very well advertise your mortgage as being one that's assumable. Now a naysayer, a naysayer is gonna be like, yeah, but DO, someone putting 20 or 30% down, why would they want an FHA loan when it comes with monthly mortgage insurance? Well, if you're putting 30% down, you, you don't pay monthly mortgage insurance. No, because you're assuming my oh, loan, okay, you okay, will. Okay, okay, okay. But here's what I'm gonna remind you. If today's current rate is, let's just say 6%, and let's say you're getting 4% or even 4.5% by assuming my loan, even when I factor in the fact that it comes with mortgage insurance, that would be no different than a rate at five or five and a quarter percent with mortgage insurance. Like you're still getting a subsidized interest rate. Right. And at a minimum, when you're selling a home, if you're the seller or you're the realtor who is representing the seller, at a minimum, you're selling and marketing something. Wouldn't it be great to at least market it one way? Even if the buyer says, yeah, you know what? I don't need to assume your loan. You at least drew attention to your property. Mm. You stood out from the crowd. You made yourself unique. Like how cool would that be? Now, what if you bought your home a year ago and you locked in at three and a half percent and your home's going up in value by six or seven percent mm -hmm. and you want to assume you want to sell your house. Now, someone can come in and assume your mortgage. You probably don't have that much equity right now. You haven't owned the home long enough. Mm -hmm. But what you're able to do is make it more attractive for someone to come in and make sure that you're at least made whole, meaning you don't have to like, well, it would suck to have to sell your house. And after realtor commissions and closing costs had to bring money to the closing table. Mm -hmm. But how nice would it be for someone to come in and assume your mortgage? When you, is this more like a thing for if someone, because you say one to three years, does this work if I've owned my house for like five to 10 years? Oh yeah, it, de it definitely okay. does. What I, The reason why I say one, two or three years is, is typically most home buyers don't have a bunch of money to put down. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what homes have appreciated over the past one, two, three years, I mean, it, it's very easy for someone to three years ago have bought a house for two fifty, and today it's worth three fifty. Right. And if you're trying to assume my loan, I probably only owe at this point like two twenty five. Okay. So I'm not selling you my house for two twenty five, and I'm not selling you my house for two fifty. I'm going to sell you my house for three fifty. It's rare to have someone that's going to have that much money, like one hundred twenty five grand, to put down for down payment. Mm -hmm. But if they do, and my rate was three and a half percent, how awesome is it? that instead of taking a six and a half percent interest rate, they're able to get a three and a half percent interest rate because they assumed my loan. Like, that's why I say one, two or three years. Now, if you bought a home a year ago, you have probably a really cheap interest rate. If you fast forward a year from now and you go to sell your house, mm -hmm. in certain markets, there's gonna be a good chance that your home a year from now is still worth what it was a year ago when you bought it, right? It may have gone up in value, but maybe the values have kind of come back down, mm -hmm. like a little bit of a, market leveling off right. or a normalization of the market. Well, that makes it pretty easy for you to say, look, I understand that when I sell my house, I'm not going to get that much equity, if any back. So someone can come in and assume my mortgage because I have a three and a half percent rate, maybe a year from now rates are at five and a half. That's still a two percent difference mm -hmm. in terms of dollars and cents on the average loan size. That's still about 250 to 300 dollars right. real money that you're saving someone. Now, if you notice, I'm talking a lot about FHA and USDA because yeah. FHA, USDA and VA loans are all assumable. FHA and USDA, it's advisable if you have that current mortgage and you're trying to sell your house, you should really look at advertising it with an assumable mortgage. Now, you do need to reach out to your servicer. You need to figure out what are the steps and the procedures for someone to come in and purchase my home and assume my mortgage, that person does have to qualify. Mm -hmm. VA loans for my veterans or my active military, from what I've read and what I've researched and what I can remember, I would not necessarily recommend you allowing someone else to assume your loan 
unless really one or two things were going to happen. A, you trusted that person emphatically. Or B, you knew that your life was close to termination and it wouldn't really matter. Mm. Because my understanding, based on my research and my experiences, is that when I am a veteran or I'm active duty military and I currently have a VA home loan on that property, my VA eligibility is still attached to that loan. So even though someone else assumed it, it still is is attached to my certificate of eligibility, my COE, which means when I go to purchase another property, a portion of my eligibility is currently still being tied up on that property, even though I'm not the person who's responsible to pay it. Mm -hmm. And if the person who assumed my loan goes into default, that could also impact my future eligibility. Again, there are regional home loan centers throughout our country. Like we live in Florida and there's one actually over in St. Pete. If I'm a veteran and I own a home before I allow someone to assume it, I'm going to call those people. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call my servicer. I need to figure out what is at stake if the proverbial shit ever hit the fan. Right. But I do not foresee an issue at all for a seller to have a home buyer come in and assume their USDA loan or their FHA loan. But what you do have to understand, there are qualifications. It is not just a sign here. Oh, great. Right. No, no, no. That person's still going to get credit qualified. Now, if you're a loan officer, you may be like, hey, Dio, how do I get paid? Guess what, homie? You don't. What? No, you don't get paid on that transaction. Gotcha. Nope. But what you do do by sharing this knowledge and this information, you do your job. Your job is to be the community expert. Your job is to be the person with the knowledge. Your person, the person who can solve for whatever issue it is of the day. Mm. And this is something you could bring to the real estate community. And by the way, that seller, 75 times out of 100, guess what that seller is going to do? Re refinance? No, no, the seller, not oh, the buyer. Oh, 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 I, I, I don't know. What are they going to do? They had to live somewhere, John. So they got to get a new house. They have to go get a new house. Yeah. Guess what they're probably going to need? A, a loan officer? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so look, you help that seller get their home sold in return. You look to earn their business when what right. they buy. Or you help that person get into the assumable loan. That's a good loan for them now. But I know statistically they're going to refinance or buy another property every five to seven years. Mm -hmm. I put them in my database. I stay in front of them. And I still become their mortgage lender for life. Right? But it's about doing the right thing today right. for both the seller, the realtor, the person buying it. Mm -hmm. What's it, So what type of – I'm trying to understand this because this is like – is this like a, a super tactic or is this something that is readily – it is no. the biggest, best kept secret in the industry because you have to think it's very market specific. It's very market spe specific. Like in a market where interest rates were flat or declining, why would I ever want to assume a loan? I can go get a cheaper interest rate elsewhere. So I wouldn't go through the rigmarole. Mm -hmm. Or in a market where, you know, the difference between the seller's mortgage rate and the going mortgage rate may only be a quarter or a half a percent. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, I don't want to have to navigate having to come up with the cash necessary to bridge the gap between what does the seller currently owe and what is the home selling for? Because that's the biggest hurdle, right? There's two big hurdles with assumable mortgages. The first one is, look, if the seller has a conventional conforming loan, that is one that's backed by Fannie or Freddie, they're not assumable. And that's a large swath of loans that are originated, like a super large, 50 to 70% in some markets. The other hurdle is the buyer would love to assume the seller's mortgage, but the buyer can't come up with that spread between what the seller owes and what the seller is selling the house for, mm -hmm. right? Because you owe 250, you're selling it for 350. Mm -hmm. I have to come up with 100 grand. I, had, I only have 35 grand. I have enough for a 10% down payment, John. So for me to do 35 grand down and assume your loan for 250, 250,000 plus 35,000 is $285,000. That's a far cry away from 350. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to save the home for. So the other hurdle would be that. So in many, many, many markets, it just doesn't make sense. Like, because whether it's rates or the, or the, by meaning rates, were better in the current market than they were when the seller bought. So why would I assume a rate that was higher than current market? Mm -hmm. Or it, um, 
was it wasn't a big enough savings to, for me to have to come up with the, the the down payment. So for me to understand, I'm just trying to understand. So when yes. I assume a, a mortgage, am I also assuming that the, the interest rate that that person has? On That's why you're doing it. Gotcha. Okay. When you assume my mortgage, what you're trying to gain? Yeah, you're probably thinking, what's my rub? What's my yeah, game? What's the rub? Yeah, that's what's the rub here? You're, yeah, you're getting my interest rate. I bought this house two years ago at a 3% interest rate. If, if you can pay me what I need for this home and you can come up with the down payment that's going to be necessary, and in many cases, that could be a large down payment because my home's worth a lot more today than it gotcha. was when I bought it. Right. But the rub, John, you get my 3% rate, not the going rate gotcha. that if you called, if you called you know, your buddy over at right. CMG Financial and he quoted you a 6.75, right. and you can assume my loan at three, damn skippy. Right. Even if my loan has mortgage insurance. All right. Like, okay, so that would be like having a rate at 3.85 versus a, a rate at 6.75. Hmm. You want that loan. Right. Yeah, you want that loan. So you're looking for a seller that currently has an FHA or a USDA loan. If they have a VA loan, you can approach that veteran and say, hey, would you be willing to let me assume your loan? But then guys like me are going to grab that veteran or grab that active duty and say, hey, man, before you let someone assume your loan, you need to figure out what does that mean to your entitlement? What does that mean to your right. VA benefits in case something catastrophic right, happened right. and John quit paying the, right. the loan on time? Does this work on jumbo loans? Because I haven't heard you say that. That's a great question. I'm going to channel my inner Danielle Anderson. And here it comes. It depends. It depends. Okay. Every lender, every investor, every bank is going to have their own special requirements because mm -hmm. those are what we call non-GSE loans, right? They're not government-sponsored entities. Fannie, Freddie, right? Or government entities, USDA, VA, FHA, right? We've taught that. If it ends in A. It's a government. And if it's a government loan, we can only finance what types of properties? First, uh, primary. Primary homes. There you go, John. <laughs> yeah, two and a half years, you're learning. Yeah, yeah we're going to force you into becoming a loan My officer My NMLS one day. number is going to look like a phone number. <laughs> Your NMLS number would look <laughs> yeah. like an international phone number. We got to drop a one well, in front of that. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yes, you would have to check. Or like, let's say you went to a bank like Trusco. So Trusco is a bank out of like New Jersey, but they have bank branches all the way down the Eastern seaboard. And they are what I call an old school bank. Mm -hmm. They almost operate like a savings and loan back in the day before savings and loans got wiped out in the 1980s, mm -hmm. where they follow what I would call conventional conforming guidelines, but they don't securitize or sell their loans to Fannie and Freddie. Like they literally, those loans sit on their books, mm -hmm. their true portfolio. Right. And there is a chance that that type of loan, because it's not packaged into a bond or a security necessarily, then there's a chance that um, you could reach out to that seller's lender, right? You'd have to get out the mortgage statement, look at the phone number and reach out. Gotcha. Just don't get tricked into this because trust me, they'll try to trick you. If the loan's not assumable, that person on the other line, if they're any good, would be like, but I can help you qualify for a mortgage. No, 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 I'm good. Like, now nah, I'm good. I'll call a D over at Waterstone, you know? No, right. no, nah, nah, I'm good. I'm going to check with my realtor. I'm sure he or she has someone local that they know, like, and trust. I'd rather use them. Mm -hmm. But the seller is where it should start. The seller needs to call their lender and ask, is, is my loan assumable if I were to sell my house? And if so, what is the process? Mm -hmm. But I think the catch, the rub for us as an industry and as a market would be how do we teach people how to take advantage of these super subsidized interest rates? They don't even know it, right? Like we're trying to make them say, hmm, mm. like, what is this? Yes, you heard it first here. You heard it first <laughs> here. Check into whether or not the seller's current mortgage is assumable. If yes, how much does the seller owe? And then if yes, or not if yes on that, like mm. take that dollar amount, subtract it from the purchase price. Can you come up with that difference? That's the big question. Can you come up with that difference? In some cases, no. In some cases, yes. Question. <coughs> yes. If What if the seller has paid up? They don't have a mortgage. Well, there's nothing to assume, Okay, just question. I was just yeah, getting deep nothing, in that. I didn't know if there's, there's like. There's nothing to assume. So you, okay, so you can't be like, hey, I paid off my house, but I, my interest rate at the time was like 3%. Okay, you can't get it. No. Okay. No, because in fact, you have to keep that in, into an account. Like, let's say they originally borrowed 400, but they paid it down to 200. Right. When you assume it, you only owe 200. If you're trying to buy that home for $500,000, you have to come up with the difference in cash Shit. between 500 and 200. That's 300 grand. Not everybody has that type of coin sitting around 
when they're hanging their laundry on a damn chain link fence. Hey, it works. It yeah. just sucks when it rains out because then it, yeah. Hey, at least it gets washed out. At least yeah. all that stank gets washed out. <laughs> you would think. I've gotten so bad with me training for this uh, half Ironman yeah. that I would just straight up take my shirt off and I throw it in the pool. That's a kind of a good yeah, idea. Yeah, like at a minimum, I need to get the funk out of it. And then I let it hang dry. Then it goes into the laundry room and then it gets washed. Might get some growth, some film on the top. That's why you got a good pump with the pool guy. No, I don't have a pool guy. What? No. You do your own pool? I got a pool girl. Oh, pH levels and everything, huh? Yeah, Michelle's awesome. Really? Yes. My wife loves me. She goes down to pinch a penny. Really? Yes. I see her out there like dumping 20 <laughs> pounds of salt into the into the the, the pool because one of the salt water pools. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah, fancy stuff. But that's the two of loans, John. That's like, deep, yeah. Like, it, know it, learn it, research it, right? Like, we gave you the basics. We gave you enough talking points to get you excited. Mm -hmm. We gave you enough talking points to maybe want to go teach a lunch and learn, mm -hmm. maybe do an email blast, maybe do a TikTok reel, Instagram thing. <laughs> yeah. By the way, my kids make fun of me because I do watch reels. But they're like, dude, only old people watch reels. And then they were at, like, this family event a week ago. And at the family event a week ago, my daughter, who's 14, was making fun of me to our 40-year-old cousin. Right. So he and I are only three or four years apart. Right. And he was like, yeah, only old people watch reels. So hold on, we already missed the boat. So what are kids watching now? No, TikTok. It's not a reel. TikTok is TikTok. Oh God, it's the same. But no, and TikTok is evil. TikTok is straight up evil. Oh goodness. Devil made it. TikTok is like if Disney, the mafia, got together and created a love child. I think that was called Mickey Mouse. No, 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 no. There's two evil empires. The mafia is one of them, and Disney's the second one. Right. Oh, about ABC. Okay. What about what? Yeah, yeah I, know, I know. And then, and then, if they made a baby, then it's TikTok. Okay. It's that bad. Well, I don't. I'm not. I'm only on there to educate, motivate, entertain people when it comes to mortgages and financial literacy that they should have learned in high school. I don't fraternize on there. Okay. Yeah. But nonetheless, That's that cool. that is what you should be doing with it. With with this information, right. take it, digest it, regurgitate it. Do it in a lunch and learn. Yeah. Do it as... Pla at, plagiarize this shit. We don't care. Say it's your own idea. We know where it came from. Exactly. <laughs> hey, and if you like doing that, we have 272 other episodes Damn, yeah. that we want you to swipe and adapt. Because quite honestly, John, most of what you and I talk about... Ain't new. It's not new. No, but it's true. It is true. But it's true. That's why we talk about it. Yeah. We teach it. We try to make it fun. We try to make it entertaining. If you like what we're doing, please tell other people to check us out. His name is John Coleman. If you ever want to get in contact with him, do not just fucking Google his name. Don't. You will find him. There, so, there's only one John Coleman in this how. world that matters. Uh, that's also true. There's another hundred thousand that you have to you have to just, be able to weed through. <laughs> My name is Dustin Owen. If you ever want to connect with me, the easiest way is to do so on LinkedIn. If that is too boomer esque for you, <laughs> hit me up on Instagram. What? But until then, he's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. That's all the time we have for you today. But we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you.